What a great man, huh? I really like Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. But I also liked uh, Mayor Pete, I must tell you. He was also great. <sighs> Dear friends, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Wow, look at that. Amazing. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I attended your uh, first ever convention 10 years ago on my first year at the Knesset. And the work you have been doing since is utterly remarkable. J Street, really, J Street has become a beacon of true and just values and of effective progressive politics, not only for the American Jewish community and not just as an ally for us progressive and pro-peace Israelis, you became an important political player in the U.S. national political scene affecting all Americans and millions of others around the world. And for that, I wish to thank you from the bottom of my heart. <clears throat> Nevertheless, my friends, our common goal is not yet achieved. Ending occupation and promoting the two-state solution for Israelis and Palestinians seem far and difficult. You are trying to harness American foreign policy to that end, and that is essential. In order to succeed in this important battle we fight, we must see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is about democracy. We are fighting to save democracy. We are fighting to stop racism, discrimination, lies and deception. We are fighting to stop fascism. All over the world, in Europe, in Latin America, in Asia, and yes, in Israel and in the United States, we face a tsunami of hatred and bigotry, led by rulers who have no red lines. These are people and political movements full of contempt to democratic values. For them, these values and institutions, the free media, the rule of law, the free-spirited culture, the freedom of speech, equality, all this for them is a nuisance an obstacle which should be pushed out of the way. All these values are regarded by them as limiting, whereas they strive for power without limits. For us, Israelis and American Jews, this is, my friends, a crucial battle. In Israel, Netanyahu and his extreme right-wing allies are pushing aggressively for annexation of all of the Palestinian West Bank, for religious coercion, for racist legislation, and of course, for securing themselves endless term in power. And we should not allow it. We should not allow it. Because, because the very essence of the Zionist vision, of our great dream, a Jewish and democratic state is in danger. Annexation, coercion, and racism would be the end of Israel as a Jewish and democratic nation. In the US, the Jewish community, and let me tell you this as an Israeli, as a Jew living in Israel, I have family here and many friends. I was based here. I worked here, and I know this country quite well. Let me tell you that what I see concerns me and worries me a lot. The Jewish community here in this country, this prosperous and amazing Jewish community, is facing growing and unprecedented anti-Semitism and violence. This passing year alone was the most violent in the history of this community, of your community. Twelve people were murdered in two synagogues, many of them 
many others wounded, hundreds of anti-Semitic incidents all across America. Can we really, can we really close our eyes and say that there is no connection between all this hate and what happened in American politics since the last presidential campaign? Can we say that? Those people attacking synagogues in Pittsburgh and San Diego, and people attacking a synagogue in Halle, Germany, on Yom Kippur, are one and same. And it is the same people, same criminals, who burn a Palestinian boy in Jerusalem to his death. There aren't many sides to that, as your president put it after Charlottesville, Virginia. There are only two sides. Either you are for democracy, for human rights, for peace, or you're against it. And each, each and every person in the US, in Israel, in France or in Brazil should ask himself and herself, where do I stand? Which side am I supporting? And this is the same fight and the same challenge in Israel and in the US. You cannot separate the fight against anti-Semitism from the fight for democratic values. It's the same front. You cannot fight against anti-Semitism and be quiet when Muslims or gay people are targeted. One, <laughs> one, let's say an average American Jew cannot say, and I hear this a lot, unfortunately, I am against racism in New York, but I keep quiet about racism in Israel. No, this is the same battle. And one, Let's say an average Israeli cannot say, I feel strongly for freedom and tolerance and for my free secular lifestyle in Tel Aviv, but I don't care about diminishing freedoms elsewhere in the world. No, this is the same battle everywhere. The same forces are in motion here and in Israel. Sometimes even, by the way, the same people and the same money. And in order to counter and defeat them, we have to be much more active and do it together. It's a two-way two street, my J Street friends. Israelis should be active, present, and vocal in your struggle here against racism and anti-Semitism. We should not follow Netanyahu's foreign policy in putting all the eggs in one right-wing Republican basket. You know, all those tweets and statements by President Trump that glorified nationalists and insulted American Jews. Voting Democrat was, uh, how did he say, disloyal, he said. Voting Democrat was disloyal. And the Israeli leadership, what did they do? Mumbled some words of sympathy, but took pains to shield Trump and his incitement from any blame. No, we should act differently. Bipartisan support, bipartisan support is essential to Israel. Always been. So let me say something about the US Democratic Party. The U.S. Democratic Party is a valued friend of Israel, regardless of what Netanyahu is saying. The U.S. Democratic Party is a party of civil liber liberties and thus a home for so many Jewish Americans over the past century. Israel must bridge the gap with the Democratic Party, a gap created under Netanyahu. By the way, 
banning uh, American congresswomen from entering Israel is not the way to do it. <clears throat> At the same time, American friends of Israel should not follow Trump's lead in giving Netanyahu, the settlers, and the coercists a green light for annexation and discrimination. What should be done? Work together with the Israeli left. Be who you are. Let us be who we are. Progressive, left-wing, defenders of democracy together, here and in Israel. Let us work together on the two-state solution, but also, but also, minority rights, on LGBT rights. As it happens, I'm going to tell you a secret. As it happens, I am the uh, first head of a party in Israel who is openly gay. Yeah. Well, there should be more. There should be more. It should be obvious. Let's work together on freedom of religion and freedom from religion. There are so many things we can do and we can achieve mutually. Finally, maybe, you know, maybe there is a light at the end of this dark tunnel. Here and in Israel, we see strong movements, resisting hate and corruption. So many young people here at your convention, amazing people, activists, volunteers, amazing people. We have to seize the opportunity and form a new government in Israel based on the center-left parties, including the joint Arab list. Yes. And I'm telling this to you as head of a Zionist party, as an Israeli wishing to achieve Jewish-Arab partnership in Israel based on equal citizenship. And yes, <laughs> Netanyahu and all the right-wing racist parties must realize there is no future to Israel without Jewish Arab partnership. This is a cornerstone to us. Therefore, I use this uh, stage in order to call upon Benny Gantz, General Benny Gantz, whom, I met, whom I've, I've met several times in the last month or so. He's the head of the Kaholavan, biggest party in the Knesset now. Benny, do not fall into Netanyahu's trap, there is no unity with the Likud, which is today, the Likud today is an extreme right-wing party. Bibi, Bibi should go home and face his trial like every other citizen. Benny Gantz, we have lots of hopes from you. Live up to the moment, carpe diem as they say, seize the day and form a government with the forces that support you, with the Labour Party, with us, the Democratic Union, Merits, and with the joint list so that we can have a government of change. <laughs> Finally, a government a government that will restart the peace process, fight racism and bigotry, reinforce social justice, and you say it a lot, tikkun olam. You know, this is the meaning of Jewish values. This is the real Jewish courage. Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, right? What is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. This is the whole Torah, said Hillel the Elder. So let us follow that. 
so we could all be proud in our beloved Israel. We love Israel. I'm an Israeli. I'm patriotic. I love my country, and I want it to be equal and just and peace, you know, with our neighbors. This is the Israel. This is my Israel. I, I think this is also your Israel. And friends, <clears throat> you know, many people are skeptical. You know, they, they have doubts. They, they, they don't know what will happen. You know, they are frustrated with the situation here and in Israel and around the world. You know, all those dark forces raising. I tell you, my friends, we shall overcome. Because as uh, Martin, Martin Luther King said, the arc, you know this, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And you know, he said this for the first time, I think, in a sermon at uh, Temple Israel in Hollywood, 1965. Okay? So let me conclude with the words of Rabbi Max Nussbaum on that day with Reverend King at Temple Israel in Hollywood. I hope, he said, I hope that together we may move away from the mountain of hatred and prejudice toward the large and glorious valley of human brotherhood. That's our ambition, that's our goal, and we will achieve it. Thank you very much, my friends. Thank you. Toda rabba lachem. Toda. Thank you very much. Someone's up in the